Ladies and gentlemen, we are broadcasting worldwide now well into the third hour of this June 2nd, 2015 transmission. A lot of really important news up on Infowars.com. Rand Paul joins fight to release secret 9-11 documents. Bilderberg 2015, elites prepare for nuclear economic devastation. Uh, liberals worship Caitlyn Jenner as transgender goddess. That's what's important as we uh, see the world destabilize. Florida court rules off the grid living illegal. Hacked emails expose George Soros as Ukraine puppet master. Uh, Paul Craig Roberts has an article ruled by corporations. Trendies ready for the ultimate wearable implantable microchip under their skin. Obama, I will never engage in the politics in which I'm trying to divide people. Talk about a 1984 statement. That's some of the news on Infowars.com right now. I haven't gotten to FBI behind mysterious surveillance aircraft over cities, planes carrying video, cell phones, snooping technology, hidden behind fictitious government front companies. I told you about this, I don't know, more than 10 years ago. Uh, they've got not just the FBI. Uh, the EPA has them. The FDA has them. Uh, the Department of Energy has them. And they're just fleets of Cessnas. And they fly around... Department of Energy, Department of the Interior. If you build a barn on your property when you're not supposed to, you know they, they, they come and find you. They use predator drones on people because the cows that come on their property in South Dakota, no, North Dakota three times, under law, you can then take the cows. They did that, so they had predator drones from the Air Force come in. We reported on it. They made fun of us and said that wasn't happening. Coming up at about 40 after... When uh, Steve Pachenik leaves us, I will break that down in detail. But I'm glad that's finally uh, hitting the news. But before we go uh, any further, I wanted to just bring up the fact that Jade Helm is still coming up uh, in July and August. I don't expect it to be a military takeover at that time. We said day one, it's conditioning to train our military to accept it, to train the public to accept it. And it's been in the Army times, the Army War College has reported at Stars and Stripes, that the military's, quote, training to crush a Tea Party rebellion. And it's training for domestic insurrection. While George Soros and the Democrats and the State Department and the Justice Department have been caught trying to foment any political angst in this country against the police themselves, when there's a lot of bad police and a lot of bad training, most of it federal, it's still a scapegoat. And so... They want to preemptively start unrest so Obama can be the savior this summer as economic problems and other things intensify. And as Al Sharpton said, they want to federalize the states and brand any state actions to secure uh, security and order as racist. Uh, Dr. Steve Pachenik joins us, former head of psychological operations for the State Department, one of the guys that helped found Delta Force, did a lot of secret military operations uh, before that. And, of course, he co-wrote a bunch of books uh, with Tom Clancy, the late great. And he joins us now uh, to give us his take on Jade Helm and a lot of other issues that are going on. I want to ask him about blackmail in Congress with the pervert rings that seem to permeate things uh, and where he sees the election going. Also, he thinks of Rand Paul calling for the 28 pages to be released. Uh, StevePachenik.com. Steve, thanks for coming on with us. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Alex. Uh, I want to thank you for what you did in bringing up Jade Helm. Actually, I was not aware of it. I live in the south near Georgia, and actually a couple of people came up to me and asked me about it. When I checked into it, I was incredulous. I couldn't believe that we would spend $10 billion on a game that has no value whatsoever, that is not even remotely related to human terrain, which means psychological warfare, understanding cultures, understanding distant cultures, understanding different topographies and using that in uh, Texas, New Mexico, Nevada, it actually mirrored, and I couldn't believe that General Adorno hadn't read my book, State of Emergency, where it's exactly what I wrote about when the federal government came into the state governments, actually in Nevada and Texas and Colorado, over water rights. You know, I forgot. That's one of the last books you wrote. I hadn't even thought of that. You basically predicted that yeah. in, in one of your books, and then... Uh, there's another book that just came out that Colonel Schaefer wrote where the same thing happens. we got to get Schaefer back on because he said, I can't tell you what's classified 
but I've put it in a novel, and I wonder if he was trying to warn us of something. Well, I warned you about it in, in, in State of Emergency, where I literally took an actual episode from Nye County, NYE County, Nevada, over water rights, and the federal government came in and confronted our National Guard and state troopers. And to me, this was the beginning of the Second Civil War. And I couldn't believe when I read that General Adorno, who really is not qualified to be in a military command post anymore, he was a consultant to Condoleezza Rice, he was never trained in psychological warfare, he was never trained really in counterterrorism. He's the kind of political general that we've had all along from McChrystal to McRaven to Mullins to, uh, you know, a whole bunch of these generals who've done absolutely nothing. And in light of the fact that we are literally losing men, money, and time, and our allies in Palmyra, Syria, where I was there during the second Iraq war, and losing men and money and allies in Iraq, where we have been spending billions, if not trillions of dollars since the Bush administration, I find this incursion into Texas, into Southwest America, absolutely Incredible. Okay, well, let me expand on this because you are an expert in these areas. I know ran a lot of military operations, so let me dig into this with you. As a layman, I can just read all the admissions of the Pentagon that they like. They're being ordered to prepare for civil unrest, taking over states, you name it. Uh, and it looks like it's pointed at legitimate state actions, so so it's, it's very tyrannical. But showing Texas is hostile, showing Southern California is hostile, Utah is hostile, they admit in the early document it's to win hearts and minds, it's to simulate illegal activity. It's to study culture. Clearly, then, they're talking about our culture, uh, yeah. buying people off. So if their intent was to condition us to accept military on the streets, this is blown up in their face. But from your research, now looking at it, what does Jade Helm indeed look like? Just a total waste what of it money? Looks like it, it looks like a total uh, mess and a disaster and an indictment of the U.S. military because they have been losing more and more wars since 9-11, which you know was created by Bush and Cheney. They have destroyed more countries, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, and now and they're in the process of other countries, of literally losing them. They're all over Africa. What in God's name is our military and special forces doing all over Africa, fighting different insurgencies when we're not winning anything? We have no national security interests. And the Chinese are coming into every area that we're in and buying their way. They don't have any kinetic action, actions whatsoever. Yet our military has failed for the past 30 to 40 years. I would do what General Marshall, George Marshall, did when he started to implement World War II. I would fire the first 600 Navy admirals and generals. We have had nothing, nothing but incompetent military senior officials. I understand it's incompetent civilians. overall, but, but what, is the, what, what do you think, looking at it, was was the establishment's plan to launch this? I don't think the establishment is that clever or that effective or that brave. Quite frankly, most of our generals are not very brave. They are men who really want to stay into the system so they can garner their uh, pensions and then make money in the military-industrial complex. They don't have the guts to become tyrannical. You don't have that kind of man here. You don't even have it in Obama. You basically have men who are following orders, just like the Germans did. They're following okay, orders. Okay, well, who's given the orders then? Because, because that sounds even scarier to have incompetence poking China and Russia. That's correct. That's, now you hit it on the head, Alex. That's what I wanted to inform you and your people is that this is beyond incompetence. This is gross negligence and incompetence, but I don't mind firing them. I don't mind if they stay in their forts, Fort Bliss. Hood. I mind paying $10 billion for a totally useless exercise, which at the same time exacerbates any concerns that we have about the government, reaffirms the fact that we, the American people, do not trust our civilian leaders, our military leaders, our intelligence leaders, or our legislative leaders. In fact, what's happening with this very exercise and why I thank you and your audience is that it reaffirmed that under no condition do we have any trust whatsoever, whether you're Republican, Democrat? So it's a good Democrat. message to send, don't ever try to bring in martial law. No, you can't. I mean, when I needed the military and I needed the FBI in a hostage situation, they were incompetent. 
They immediately said, no, doctor, I have posse comitatus. I said, fine, don't come in, but don't bother me. And then the FBI couldn't handle repelling when they had a hostage situation in, in the Hanafi Muslims. So what you have... That's right. Uh, yeah, I ought to have you on for a full hour sometime about the stuff that's declassified on some of the famous hostage situations that you've... Well, my point is very simple. You have a make-believe military that is, in fact, losing men in a guacamole game where they're creating all kinds of episodes and incidents and crises all over the world, thanks to Bush, Cheney, Carter, Clinton, and uh, Carter, the Secretary of Defense. Stay there, stay there. I mean, it sounds like Project Loki. It sounds like Loki runs our foreign policy. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Obviously, there is a directive to militarize police to override the Bill of Rights and Constitution. There is a totalitarian vein. A lot of these multinational corporations openly want a planetary government run by them, the opposite of a free market. They are trying to get the police to train with the military. That's a long-term project. So that's why folks are concerned about Jade Helm. Uh, but I, I was surprised by the huge response and even governors and senators coming out and saying they were concerned. I think it is a no-confidence vote regardless of the current political class with an 8% approval rating in Gallup of Congress. So with that climate, Dr. Pachinik, and the federal government funding white privilege classes in elementary schools nationwide, and teachers are reporting that it's causing just, just, just pandemonium as everybody turns on each other, why is the system trying to run a divide and conquer operation? Uh, what is your take on Soros funding anti-police operations? I mean, obviously there are problems with police, but there's a larger destabilization program here. What do you think the method of the madness is? Or is it a bunch of 60s radicals that are now in control? And even though they run things, they want to destroy it? Or is it just uh, mental illness that they want to wreck the country because they're destructive? Uh, is it deviance? Uh, is it uh, uh, what's happening? Well, I think the best way to summarize all of this is, is just complete incompetency. What we've elected is a president who never had a job, had never been in the military, had never really run anything, and on the basis of his charisma was elected. That's the same thing we elected in terms of the sociopaths, Bush Jr., who totally lied, a man who was willing to use force and the intelligence system and the military in order to kill people, our own people, in the United States. The problem is we have not been willing to hold these people accountable for their miscreant behaviors. So if the American people is not, they are not willing to stand up and say, I want Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld, uh, all the generals who are involved and all the admirals who are involved, General Myers and others, to be held accountable for our 9-11 stand-down false flag and the incompetency, as well as the CIA, we will continue to have incompetent, self-serving leaders who are intent on just serving themselves. They have nothing to do with the United States. Every general that's involved here, Adorno to Cleveland, to every other military individual, including McChrystal, were all promised jobs. So you have somebody like McRaven, who was a total disaster, as Seymour Hersh said, there wasn't even a raid. He becomes the president of Texas A&M. Why? Because the Bush family takes care of everybody who colludes with them, including Gates, the head of the CIA, who was a very ineffectual CIA director and a very ineffectual secretary of defense. So until the American public at the local level refuses to have our military stand ground in an area where it involves posse comitatus. You have commissioners at the local level in Texas, Nevada, Utah, and in Florida where we can say, no, you cannot come in here. It's posse comitatus. No, we have police forces that in, in, in enact uh, uh, judicial actions. The military sure, there are preparations for massive civil unrest at an unprecedented level. What do you think those are about? Well, I don't think they're very effective. Number one, we're a very large country. Number two, I've seen our military repeatedly defeated. Alex, this is something your audience has to understand. We have been defeated with trillions of dollars in Iraq. This is the 12th year that we now, uh, Secretary of Defense... But that's Carter, the larger globalist plan to destabilize the world while sapping our resources. No. 
Well, I don't think there's a destabilization plan. Again, let me go back to where you and I differ. I think our incompetence is so grand and so fungible that we have been funding people who should have been eliminated and totally, totally dismissed, but we don't have a legislative system that is effective. No, I know there's a lot we of incompetence, but the, the social engineers make money off the crises they create, never right, get in trouble. But, they, but basically, these social engineers, which is the military-industrial complex, we don't have a leader who comes out of the military and the business world. We need that next leader. It's not Hillary. It's not another right, Let me board. ask you this for the next segment, then. I mean, China's moving artillery into their sandcastle islands they're building. Uh, you got the situation with Russia. I mean, the world's really heating up, and I don't... Well, mm -hmm. let, me, let me be frank. I wrote about the Spratly Islands 30 years ago in Pax Pacifica. There we have been doing a pretty good job. St. Pac, our commanders in the Pacific, has handled that exceedingly well. Okay, stay there. Explain to us your take, uh, Steve Pachinik, Dr. Steve Pachinik, on the situation in the South China Sea and the uh, sandcastles, as the Pentagon calls them. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, for breaking news and the tip of the spear info. Really getting crazy. Dr. Steve Pachinik, StevePachinik.com, psychological warfare expert, uh, involved in a lot of operations, the Camp David Accords, you name it, been there for so much of history. He's a psychiatrist and also a medical doctor, <laughs> MIT and Harvard, pretty smart guy, seen a lot. Again, co-authored books with Tom Clancy. He's got a new book out uh, where he breaks down uh, basically a lot of nonfiction uh, information we'll tell you about before he leaves. But finishing up, Dr. Pachinik, with this larger subject, there is a hubris there is an arrogance. I know there's a method to their badness. They have plans. But even people that were more competent, like Napoleon and Hitler, obviously failed beating Russia. Uh, and I see this disease in elites throughout history, believing that they are basically invincible, infallible. So I think some megalomania has entered the, the uh, psyche here of the establishment. I know you're a psychiatrist, but... Uh, looking at this, looking at what's happening in China, look at what's happening around the world. I see a lot of power tripping megalomania out of other leaders as well. We can't afford to have mistakes like we've had pre-atomic and hydrogen weapons. And it really is scary to see elites running to New Zealand and buying bunkers at record levels. Uh, I mean, obviously the establishment itself is pretty freaked out right now. Is it the debt bubble? Is it the QE? Is it, I mean, why... Why are the establishment running around like chickens with their heads cut off? Well, number one, we, we really don't have very much of an establishment. The people in the White House are not very well trained or tutored in psychological warfare or foreign policy. This is one of the weakest uh, White Houses we've had in the past 30, 40 years. But the real issue is there are elements in our Navy and intelligence community that did understand the other I wrote in Pax Pacifica, the Spratly Islands. The CIA knew about it 20, 30 years ago. Our, our Navy milit uh, was effective, and they still are. I mean, they went out there. Now, what, why is the Spratly Islands important to us? Because China is basically uh, breaking her promise of saying we're not a hegemony. We're not going to be a conquering nation. We're basically a, a very peaceful and, uh, country. We made a deal to give them the world. Panama Canal, bases everywhere, let them dominate, and now they're double-crossing. Well, the truth of the matter is we've never believed this storyline, but now they've broken their own narrative by basically going into the Spratly Islands. For most of you out there, the Spratly Islands are a group of islands that have no national security interest to us and none to China except for the fact that 1,000 miles off of the navigation zone of China, that's 1,000 miles and they contain a lot of oil beneath those islands, and they're near Vietnam and the Philippines. We have basically been the guarantor of all naval movement, including civilian and military, through the Straits of Malacca to the China Sea to the Indian Ocean. And so let's we, not forget in the last two years, China's basically started having a war uh, out there, grabbing oil rigs and also having ground war on their border uh, with Vietnam. So these two are getting at each other's throat. Well, the one thing that China has to remember and the world has to remember that the only country that ever beat China in war, not once but twice, was Vietnam. I repeat that again. Vietnam beat the Chinese in a military kinetic action 
in the 70s twice. And China has to remember that, even though China, Vietnam is much smaller and looks much more uh, ineffective. I would warn the Chinese that the Vietnamese are far more effective in combat than they would imagine. But China's role is a far more a nefarious role. It's an economic domination. What they've done is to break away from the dollar. They've broken away from our currency and our Federal Reserve system so that they can create their own credit system, their own monetary system, and basically go all over the world. What's happened in the process, all of our allies have joined what's called the Asian International Infrastructure Bank, AIIB, which is a uh, spinoff of something called the International Monetary Fund. Without getting too complicated, we are now in a strategic con uh, conflict with China, not on a military basis as much as we are on a financial, economic, strategic base, where they're going to Africa and building up roads and infrastructure, and we're going to Africa uh, getting involved in kinetic action or combat, which has no value whatsoever. So when I say gross incompetence, this is really a degradation of our capacity on, on our own infrastructure because we need that money to build up our own country because the greatest national security we've ever had has been our manufacturing capacity, our entrepreneurship, our schooling, and our, our basic lifestyle. And we sold and that off to the Chinese. Well, we gave away a lot of that to the Chinese. That is absolutely correct, Alex. Most of the, Here's a very frightening uh, statistic. There are more advanced scholars in China and uh, than there are students in America. In other words, the Chinese who have studied and gotten up to the college level are far more advanced than our, all of our students combined. So our education system is faltering. And it's not in arts and humanities, it's in engineering, chemical engineering. engineering chemical engineering, and it's in all the sciences, but also in the, in the humanities. I mean, Chinese know more about our own history. I went to Beijing, there was a 10-story building that was filled with nothing but American politics, American books, and these Chinese kids read them, and they know it. They know our history better than we do. So the real issue now is where is the leadership coming from? It has to come from below to above. The leaders that have come forth are not really effective. The Bushes, the Clintons, perhaps the Rand Pauls, because he stood up and, and, and he showed a moment of courage, which I really applaud. We need more of that. We can't have the rest of the Republican or Democratic Party. We need another party to arise from the grassroots, as you effectively have done to create the Tea Party. That Tea Party was co-opted. But I have faith in the American public that's going to say, look, I don't want to spend money for an, uh, a war that comes into my area and a military that's totally ineffectual, sure. totally incompetent. Well, what about this issue? We know we have before a well-trained, patriotic, great soldiers. They're wonderful people. We're not saying they've been defeated. But the missions they were given were impossible to win. They were just to dump money into a black hole for special uh, you know, groups, contractors, and destabilize. That's basically been admitted. But if, if the globalists and, and, and the people that think they're going to have these pipe dreams, they're going to have a civil war in America, try to take our guns, and then have their little socialist brigades back up police and military to go around and arrest veterans and conservatives and libertarians, that will elicit a response that'll be like trying to get you know a moose hunting permit. Uh, I mean, there'll be no operatives left very quickly. Uh, I don't know how insane the establishment is, or maybe the plan is to start a civil war, have us all kill each other, and that's what brings down America. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a lay guy, but I'm on the ground. I've been doing this 20 years. I know how stuff works. There is a narrative in the American psyche of a globalist takeover. People are ready for it. They're not scared. And I just don't think that all these people like George Soros and others understand what they're messing with. I think they take our restraint as weakness. What do you think they're thinking? Well, I, let, me, let me make the following point. The people in the Northeast, in the Midwest, in California are really not relevant to the rest of the United States. Let me make it very simple. I live in the South. I see states like North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Texas. Uh, you know, we're all growing. The Midwestern states, the Northeastern states are dead. California is dead. I mean, Silicon Valley is producing a lot of junk that really doesn't create any effective uh, assets. It's just a, a variation on the theme. 
I'm not worried about the uh, Soros's of the world or the conscience of the world or any one of the so-called demagogues because when they have to implement any effective uh, action on the local level, particularly of, uh, with those of us who have guns, who are trained and believe in the Second Amendment, they will back off very quickly. The reason I know that is I can assure you I see policemen on the federal level coming in with vests. And it's absurd because if you're coming in to offer us uh, a subpoena or a warrant and you're wearing a vest, it's already flagging in to people like myself who are not looking for trouble. You're looking for trouble. And in the areas that I live in and the rest of America, those of us who are aware of our Second Amendment rights and our liberties will not tolerate that. The Northeast, the West Coast, it's not relevant anymore. Illinois, Detroit, Michigan, they're finished. Ohio is finished. So you have to look at the states that really are garnering assets and are building up factories. And they really are in Tennessee, North Carolina, Florida, because we're right to work states. Why is it the anything. South that everybody bashes and says we're all stupid and idiots all day are the only places growing in America? Because, you know, we play dumb South. In other words, we allow the Northerners to have their prejudice. We, we, we allow them to say what they want. But in effect, we don't pay the state taxes. We don't have unions. We don't have to have 14 different variations of taxes. We're growing economically. Every foreign country, uh, foreign company that comes in, comes into Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida. We got more high tech in here in, in, in the northern area of Florida and in Georgia than we will have in the West. That kind of prejudice will effectively end up in what I call a de facto civil war, which means that the South will rise again economically and politically in a way that the North, the Midwest, and the Northeastern parts can no longer exist. Well, if you look at the old civil war, the first one, the North one, because it was the industrial power with about 10 times the industry, and the British pulled out on funding the South, I wouldn't have supported the South or the North. The whole thing was a big tragedy, obviously, to control Western expansion. It was a fight over two different power blocks and almost happened under Andrew Jackson. Uh, but undoubtedly, it's sad to see what socialism and corrupt government has done. And not that the South is perfect or, or the Texas, the gateway to the West. Uh, but, I mean, the values on the West Coast and the East Coast are gone. These people are zombies on average. And I just, I just can't believe all these Californians, I know they're not Californians, they're folks that went to California and failed. They come here, and then they want to jack up taxes and recreate what they just left. Well, the fact of the matter is, people like myself who shot films there and, and would start up companies, when we have to have a special broker in, in California in order to pay our California taxes, forget the regular taxes, then we pull out. I mean, California is just a question of, of basically of evaporating, literally. I mean, they have a drought. They have not dealt effectively with their drought. They will have no water. The water is... The left wouldn't let them build reservoirs 30 years ago. That, they're suicidal. Well, that's their own self-destructiveness and their own arrogance. You're a that's psychiatrist. Fine. I wanted to ask you, what is up, and, and, and I'm not judging people, but obsessively pushing men wearing dresses. Now they're saying we should pay for people to mutilate themselves. In fact, what's the name they give it? Uh, they call it transabled, cutting your arms and legs off. Uh, people, the, the, the new moral standard is to not care and be evil. The new moral standard is to be a loser, to be a slacker. This is what's being pushed at universities and everywhere. Is this just the end consequence of spoiled, rotten kids having spoiled, rotten kids and decadence, Dr. Pachinik? Well, what this, what's happening in, is coming in as a media uh, penetration of a sense of neutralizing are male dominance. It's, it's an attempt to basically neutralize the testosterone that we've had in the past in this country. And you have things like Jenner's, which I don't agree with. I, I, I really would question all the surgeons who go into uh, transgender surgery. I've always questioned it. 30 years ago when John Hopkins started it, I said these people have psychiatric problems. It's not a question of just identity, and it's not just a question of what they are to themselves. However, it's not my problem, but it is my problem when I have to pay for that. I will not pay for those tranny experiments or the transgender transformations. That's their problem. That's not my problem. And let's expand. Now they're saying people don't feel good with their arms and legs. we got to pay to have those cut off. 
so they can well, have fetish sex with the limbs. Well, that's going clearly to the extremes, but the bottom line that we have to go back to is the common sense. No, but this, sir, sir, I know it's to the extremes. It's being pushed in the National Post. This watch, this is, this is the next mass mental illness is what I'm saying. Well, let me put it this way. We don't have enough psychiatrists to treat 100 million people, so you tell me what our society is saying. We did not produce enough psychiatrists, nor will we, to treat 100 million people, yet Obama and the Obamacare people say we have mental health provisions. No, we don't have any. We have no provisions. Well, let me ask you this. What I'm saying is it seems like the decadence you read about in empires that are about to fall is really going to seed right now, and I really see... Uh, a, a, a people that want to work that are normal that just that are care about just being happy and being secure versus hordes of spoiled rotten bizarro totalitarians that call themselves leftists trying to conquer us with their mental illness i mean isn't there times in history when a large portion of society goes insane uh, because of cultural reasons or whatever and then they end up assaulting the people that aren't insane well, what we have now is we, we have gone, and that's what I was trying to say from the beginning, we have gone from a republic to an empire. When we have soldiers in 722 bases in 220 countries without any clear directive as to why we're there, other than the fact we're Pax Americana, we have basically eviscerated the nature of our republic. And without leadership, what happens is every segment of our society starts to regress and falls back to the weakest element. That's it. So, and that's what's happening. And now we are literally falling back to the weakest element. We don't have education. We don't have infrastructure. And the elites you know? waging war on men. The Russians are holding men up because they know that's what's going to make a strong society. What type of elite, or is it just Hollywood mental illness, wants to screw up men? I, I just cannot believe it. Well, there's a whole notion now where we have more and more uh, people of other persuasions that are in politics. Look at the Mr. Asterisk. Look at the amount of homosexuals that we have who will, uh, you know, and I have nothing against them. But the whole issue of feminizing men has become a, pre a prevalent issue in the United States and the United States culture. When you have Bruce Jenner on the cover of Vogue magazine, I find that sick. We must be weak if, if our national obsession is men becoming women. I mean, that just sounds like the signpost of a, of a country about to collapse to me. It, it just Well, it is. And, and in turn, you can understand how the Muslims of, uh, in the Middle East can look at us and say we're a completely decadent society. When you have a Bruce Jenner rationalizing how he was a woman all the time, and then transformed it and glorifies it and reifies it on Vogue magazine, and then you have a media campaign, you realize we've lost a whole concern. Absolutely. I mean, just the focus, it should be on space exploration or scientific developments. Correct. If you want to be a Correct. woman, go ahead, but I don't, don't force feed me, and I'm sick of it. Final segment with Dr. Pachenik straight ahead. Powerful transmission. All right, Dr. Steve Pachenik of stevepachenik.com. Folks can find your books there, including your latest nonfiction. Um, I just see a general mental illness in the public, and I've, especially in young people, either they're awake or they're just into being losers, into being decadent. For decadence sake, it, it's, it's, it's a media-induced malaise. I guess the disease of the Hollywood elite, who we know are incredibly decadent, is now kind of transmuting in a mob psychology to the public uh, and it's growing, and I don't mean to be hysterical, but in closing, can you speak to what you see as a psychiatrist and then any other key points here in the last four minutes? Well, basically what I'm saying is that we're a nation that has lost our own direction because of the absence of leadership, and we're, we're accountable for that. We have to begin to say to ourselves, what do we want as a leader? Do we want a woman who's been involved? in the history of liaisons, which may or may not be legal, who's been involved in chicanery? Do we want a man who's been involved in the history of illegal activities and who has never had a real job or never been in the military? We are not holding our leaders accountable at the level of voting, at the level of accountability, at the local level. We're allowing the big donors to basically steamroll us through into a situation which is not acceptable. At some point, we will blow. That means at some point, 
the local entities will refuse to have the military in their presence. They will have, refuse to have their sons go into the military. And I see the reverse. I see people who are very well dedicated to this country, who have very strong Christian values, who work exceedingly hard and are very disappointed with our government, but they've basically decided to work their hours and, and create their businesses, and they're doing it well in the South. That's what I see. So I see the reverse of it. I've left the areas where I find the millennials and those who came out of college and have no skills, or even those who have skills, who complain that there are no jobs and indulge themselves in drugs, and there is a problem. They don't want to create their own businesses. They're not able to create their own businesses. They're spoiled brats that, that want to dominate producers as their act of conquest. They don't join the military to be a man. They don't do a business to be a man. They don't help the community be a man. They run around trying to dictate culture, just like every other spoiled, rotten kid tries to tell their parents what to do till they throw them out. Do thank you so much, Dr. Pacini. Well, thank you, and thank you, Rod. Thank you. I'm going to come back. Thank you, sir. In overdrive on the House of Cards point that I didn't make.